Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Presoteric YouTube. I am Darren Taylor, and today we're going to be talking about the law of mentalism, the all is mind, one of my favorite topics to talk about. So, without any further ado, let's jump straight into it. So in our last video, we touched on what is magic and went through a basic scientific understanding of what magic is and how it works, how the ritual process works. And in that video, we touched on the basic principle that the all is mind, that the universe is mental. And so in this video, we're going to explore a lot more in detail what that law is. Now, for those of you who have studied hermeticism, this is going to be something very familiar for those of you who haven't, I would recommend that you go and look at Hermeticism, read the Kabbalion, and get yourself a solid idea of this law. But I'm going to explain things that are not found in the Kabbalion, that a lot of Hermeticists out there don't necessarily touch on. So a lot of this may come as something completely new. For those of you who have followed my work for any length of time, this might be something you have heard before. And we're going to be talking a lot about psychology in this video. So what is the law of mentalism? Well, apart from the statement that the all is mind, the law of mentalism embodies the basic truth, or what I would say is an objective truth, that every single thing in the universe comes from thought. Every single thing in existence comes from a thought which preceded it. And that might be a bit of a bold statement, that everything in the universe comes from thought. That almost suggests that there is a creator. And we'll jump into that question a little bit later on this video, but let's just focus on, more specifically, the human creative element. We, as humans, cannot do anything without first thinking about it. This also goes for animals. Animals cannot do anything without first thinking about it. Every single living organism has a basic mind, and in order for them to function in any way, shape, or form, they need to have a mind that has that first thought process. In order for any action to occur, one has to have thought first. So just to ask you a question and give you a little test on this, can you do something without first thinking about it? Now the answer I often get into response with that is, well, yes, what about breathing? You know, we don't we're not thinking when we're breathing. Well, actually, you are. The only difference between that type of thought and the other type of thought is that that is subconscious. Subconscious and unconscious thought is still thought. Regardless of whether it is a conscious thought or a subconscious thought, it is still a thought. Everything happens according to the thought which preceded it. Every single thing that has been created by man started as a single thought. Every single action that we take throughout our day-to-day -day lives happens according to a thought which preceded it. Every animal who decides they're going to hunt their food has to have the thought to do it first. Arguably, you could say it's subconscious or consciously. It really makes no difference. The fact remains is that every li living organism functions on thought first before it accomplishes anything. This is just a basic objective rule of science. You could argue that even things outside of the animal kingdom follow the same principle. Single-celled organisms have a very basic mind function. The single cells that make up your entire body have a very basic mind. Now, okay, the mind isn't as sophisticated as an animal's or ours, but it still has a basic mental function. And so it carries out its actions based on thought. And so even plants and trees follow this same principle. They do things according to thought. Not a difficult concept to grasp. Now, why is this important to magic? Well, because this tells us something very important about magic. All magic begins within the mind. I would argue that magic itself is completely mental, that all magic is psychological. But for this video, we'll just focus on this principle. All magic begins with thought. Now, when I first stumbled upon this law many, many years ago, the first thing that came to my mind 
was what about psychology? If the all is mind, the universe is mental, and the universe itself is a living, intelligent mind, not necessarily like a god, but just itself a living, intelligent mind, then what does that tell us about psychology? Psychology is the study of the mind, more specifically the human mind as we tend to think of it. But it's a study of mental processes. And so I decided to look into psychology, something which a lot of magicians don't do. If you look around the occult communities or the spiritual communities, you will find that very few people have even a basic understanding of psychology and the various principles around it. Ask your typical occultist if they under, if they know what pareidolia is. Ask them if they understand what placebo is. Do they know what idiomotor responses are? Do they know what psychodrama is? All of these things provided a huge benefit to my magical practice, and it was what led me to conclude that all magic is psychological. The law of mentalism, to me, didn't just embody that all magic begins with the mind and all things begin with the mind, but that magic is psychological, that the universe is psychological in nature, that all of life's processes are focused around the mind. And so really, existence hinges on mental processes, hinges on psychology. Now, here's something for you to consider. Our mind creates our reality. Every single thing that we experience in our lives, and you can say this for other living things as well, especially animals, that our five senses are only picking up vibrational information, which our brain then decodes. Our eyes work by taking vibratory light and turning that into an image. Sound, sight, taste, smell, all of our five senses are just essentially picking up electromagnetic energy, vibrations, and turning that into what we see as three-dimensional reality. So imagine life if you took away your five senses. What would reality be like? So what you can say is, since you understand how the brain manipulates our reality, that all reality is filtered through the mind. All of life is a mental experience. This is why I believe the quote, life is a dream, is perfect for the law of mentalism because it really does explain how we experience reality. We all experience reality through the mind. Our minds create our reality. And as such, life itself is mental. And because that it is a mental thing, it also means that it is flexible. By changing our minds, we can change our environment. And by having a deeper understanding of our own mental processes, we can have a greater understanding of the universe and the environment around us. The way that I like to describe reality is that our five senses pick up vibrational energy that's what we could say is external, and our brain, or mind rather, projects that into this three-dimensional reality that we see, uh, you know, on an every, everyday basis, I suppose. Magic is essentially using the mind to then rewire that projection to bring us things that we desire. Very, very simple, not that complicated. All ritual is a psychological process in the same way that our fingers, our fingers, our eyes, our ears, our nose, our mouth picks up vibratory energy and then projects that. Magic is taking our thoughts and projecting those to alter the current reality that we are experiencing. So when we look at the statement, the all is mind, that's not just a reference to magic. It is a reference to life. All of life is mental. Life is a dream. It is flexible. It is pliable. And that is why we are able to have such a large influence over our environment. Quotes like, your focus determines your reality. What you think about, you bring about. All of these stem from that same revelation. That reality, life, is mental. And as such, the more power you have over your mind, the more control you have over your mind, the more easily you are able to manipulate your own mind, the more control, influence, and power you have over reality, over your own reality. As Bob Proctor says, if you want to change your life, all you have to do is change your mind. And this, again, fits perfectly with magic. 
what every magician is attempting to do is to change their reality or manifest something in their reality by using mental tricks. Now, in this video, we're not going to go into a complex model of the mind. We can do that in a separate video where we can dissect the mind and look at the various different parts of it. But we can do this to explain magic. Now, I touched on this more or less in the last video, that what every magician is doing is using the law of mentalism as the entire ritual process. When you go into ritual, you are attempting to impress an idea upon your subconscious mind so that your subconscious will then manifest those results into your life. This is the law of mentalism. The law of mentalism is the most functional process throughout every single tradition in magic. The law of mentalism is the basic function of life, and that includes magic. Magic and life are interchangeable words in my vocabulary. And so, magic is a mental process. This is why magic is all psychological, because life is psychological. Your mind is somewhat of a processor for raw data, the same way that your computer is an interface to process data. So when you understand what creates the graphics on the screen on your computer, it's not all the colors and everything that's on there, all the graphics. It's literally a sequence of zeros and ones and other data that then comprise what you're seeing on the screen. Well, life is very similar. You need to have a processor for the raw data, the raw data being the vibrational energy which is outside of us. And our minds process that and create images and creates this three-dimensional reality. Additionally, this is how we do magic. We are essentially giving different data, different information in an attempt to create something different on the screen. And this is just a very, very basic introduction to the law of mentalism. We are going to go into a lot more detail with uh, different concepts, including basic psychology, because I think the basic psychology is something that not enough people understand. Because once you understand the basic mechanics of psychology and understand your own mind, you can begin to understand magic. This is why I believe the quote, know thyself, is so important. It doesn't mean know who you are. It means understand your mind, because the more you understand your mind, the more you will understand what you need in order to change your reality. And by that, I mean perform magic. So to end off this video, I want to highly recommend that you go and study some basic psychology. You don't have to go and get a PhD in order to learn the basic underlying mechanics and principles of psychology, but go and do a little bit of research. Do a little bit of study on your own, read a few books and understand a lot of the basic models of the mind and understand the different points and places that it has on it. And you will find that your magic will make a huge difference. In getting to know your own mind, you will get to know exactly what you need to be successful in ritual magic. So I'm going to leave it here. I want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'm going to ask you to please hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Your support is all greatly appreciated. I want to thank you again for watching, and until next time, stay awesome.